All right, guys, it is Mental Health on the Mic. I'm your host, Bennett Shear, back with Lorena Finye, as always. Lorraine, what's up? Hello. Uh, welcome back. Or if you're new here, hi. Welcome to Mental Health on the Mic. Yes. Um, I'm really excited to be filming this episode today. I'm so excited to be here. Now, before we go any further, uh, Lorraine, you do have a friend that I don't know, but is now my friend. So without further <laughs> ado, I think you should do the introduction here because you know Jackie. So take it away. Yeah. We have our, my best friend I've known for about three years now, Jackie, who's joining us today. Say hi. hi. <laughs> With a rocking headset, I might add, yeah. if you're watching this on YouTube. She is so pro. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And speaking of YouTube, if you want to watch Mental Health on the Mic, you can check out our YouTube channel. You can go to our website, mentalhealthonthemic.com. Follow us on Instagram, TikTok, or you can just listen. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeart, Google Podcasts, wherever you listen. Now, this week we are going to be talking about anxiety. Um, I did an episode on this in season one. I did a very specific episode centered around anxiety because it's something I deal with. It's something a lot of people deal with. So I wanted to touch on it again. I think um, literally probably everybody in their lifetime at some point has experienced some level of anxiety. It doesn't matter if it's just being anxious about a test or if you're like me and you live with it on a regular basis. So let's just all talk about it. Let's talk about what anxiety means to us. Jackie, I want to start with you. And first of all, I would love to know a little more about you and who you are and then kind of how anxiety plays a role in your life. Yeah. So hi, I'm Jackie. Um, <laughs> I'm turning 21 in a couple of weeks so that's exciting but I think like a lot of the issues I deal with is basically I um, pay all my own bills and I put my own roof over my head so that's like sort of a lot about me is like I'm quite independent and have been since I was about 17 I moved out of home then and ever since I've been renting, um, living with friends, family, whoever, and just like, yeah, just working. And I um, graduated from my tourism diploma um, probably two years ago now. And yeah, that's sort of me. She's from New Zealand, which is insane. She's international. So we have like a really cool perspective on this show now, which I love. If you're yeah. from yeah. New Zealand, like <laughs> let us know. If you're watching, you're listening, watching. Yeah, um, no, I was just thinking. I can confirm after reflecting on all the episodes I've done of this show and other podcasts, you are our first international <gasps> guest. So I think that calls. Oh wow! For <laughs> oh my yeah. god, I love it. I love her accent. So if you like accents, enjoy this like forty to fifty minute episode because it's amazing. <laughs> yes cool accent cool perspectives i cannot wait to hear more from you jackie and actually i, I was going to say i'm in a very different point in my life right now because i well you'll learn, you'll learn more about me but as far as where i am education wise work wise it's it's pretty different but i was immediately curious when you talked about leaving home at 17 what kind of anxiety that may have sparked for you was it easy was it scary how did it feel it was really scary i think the first moment when it sunk in was because I moved halfway across the country away from my family and friends um so I think it sunk in the first moment when I sat at the airport and was saying goodbye and as I was walking towards um the plane to get on the plane um I looked back at my family and I was like okay well now now you're really on your own and that's when like all the feelings sort of hit me at once and I wasn't expecting it to hit me at once and then obviously I moved up and went to university moved um, to a place called Wellington here in New Zealand and yes I started university as well so I also had the anxiety from that and having to make new friends and get and like university is your version of college it's just different wording here um so <laughs> if that. anyone was confused um so yeah I went to college and um yeah so I had like all the worry and stress from having to start that in the back of my mind as well so like it was all those feelings at once and it just like sort of started to cloud over me but then obviously I started to make friends which helped me and the university had lots of support around me too which was really good well, so, oh, go ahead. I'll end it. <laughs> I was gonna ask. So, what year did you start university? 
or college? Um, 2019. So that was the year oh. I met you. So that's okay. So you had friends physically in university, but you also met friends online at this yeah. relatively around the same time. Mm. Yeah, basically. So I sort of found like a YouTube channel called m e which you know all about them. I know, I um, yes. <laughs> Yeah, so I found them sort of about halfway through university. It was sort of one of the lowest points of my life. I oh, sort of wow. felt really lonely, was missing all my family and friends. Mm-hmm. And then that's when I started like befriending you guys online, that's which was really nice. And that like gave me a lot of support that I didn't know I needed. I love that. Yeah. I'm so glad that you joined because you, we wouldn't be in the situation right now. No. <laughs> That's so special. It's your family. And uh, yeah, I, I can I can actually relate. So um, Jackie, I I went to university college in actually fall of 2019. Um, and uh, even before COVID started and that kind of scrambled everything, I was dealing with a lot of anxiety, homesickness, missing family. Um, and I've always had a hard time making friends. I over the years became more aware and I sort of just, I never fit in. Um, And I think that some people think of college as an opportunity to change that. They think, well, you're going to go and there's so many people, right? So you can, you're, you're destined to find, you know, your people. I didn't find that. Um, And I, I liked the school, but making friends was really hard and it, it became, it felt kind of sad to just know that, you know, I, I was the kid who would spend, you know, weekend nights alone in my dorm because I didn't have the friends to hang out with. And I was too, frankly, too nervous and afraid to go up to them because I was so scared. Um, And then I think my lowest point came actually right before COVID when I I just felt depressed and I felt um, unmotivated and there was nothing that was really keeping me going. And I actually went to a therapist on campus, which helped a little bit. And the crazy thing was in my mind, and this is like, as I'm literally spending like Saturday, Sunday nights on the phone with my parents, two hours at a time being like, I'm just so unhappy. I don't know what to do. I literally said to myself, you know, I would love to just have a break from everything. Like I know that I, I, summer's not here yet. Spring break's a while away, but I would, you know, just a couple of weeks to just wind down and have a, a time to just reflect. Next thing you know, COVID happened. So putting aside the terrible things that has done to our world it almost was a little bit relieving because I, unlike everybody else who was devastated to be leaving campus, I felt relieved. And that was almost kind of a sad thing to feel because you should be loving where you go to school. But I was just relieved to get home and to feel safe again. Um, little did I know that I'd be home for as long as I had been. And and I'll get a little bit later into more of, of where I am now with school. But uh, I definitely relate to that feeling of, of loneliness and emptiness. And I think for you, finding that community with Emily, Maddie, and Elijah, if y'all listening don't know. Um, I think that that must have been really special. Lorraine, I want to ask you because you are also a huge part of that fandom. So yeah. I, maybe, I don't know if if, if any of, of your journey with being part of that group had to do with like you finding a community and maybe you've dealt with some anxiety at some point. What would you say about that? Um, well, first off, I'm too young to talk about college and university because I'm not in that stage of my life yet. Um, so I don't really have that experience yet, but, um, I find school to be lonely sometimes in high school. Um, I don't have a big circle of friends. I have close, like one or two or three that I talk to every day, but which is fine. I, I prefer quality over quantity always. Um, but there were times, I think as an only child also, Bennett can relate to this and Jackie, do you have siblings? Yeah, I have two older brothers. Okay. Mm. I just want to make sure I wasn't leaving you. I didn't I didn't think you were an only <laughs> child, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, but um, so I get lonely sometimes, you know, being home, not having a sibling to talk to whenever I want to. I always have to rely on my friends to, you know, have that like social interaction with. Um, and you know people are busy, people have plans. So like, I'm always relying on them. And at times, you know, they can't come over or they're busy. So I'm kind of there myself at home. Um, So joining that community was very good for me because, you know, we, we talk on Snapchat, we talk on Instagram, you know, we have daily zoom parties all the time. Like that gave me a whole other source of friends that I could rely on. And 
I love it. Like it's yeah. so sweet. It's like a family. Um, it's yeah, like, we all just like oh. tend to get on really well and just support each other when we need, yeah. which is so good. And like, it's hard to find friends like that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, I love it. And it's just, it, it's kind of like if you, if you aren't part of that, like fandom culture, it's kind of, if you play a sport it's like a sports team. It's, it's, you know, you're coming together, you're doing the same thing, you're supporting, you know, you know, whether it's a singer or an actor or, you know, a YouTube or a social media star. Um, it's just, it's a really cool community. And I'm really glad I joined it. I don't even know what, I, th- I don't think I was even, I think I was turning 13 when I started. So I was so oh my young. Gosh. I was so <laughs> young. I think it was 2018. Um, and- I've always been like our little baby. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I know, and I love it because I feel like um, you're kind of like the siblings I didn't have. That's basically what it is. Like I have an older brother, and I have one, two, three, f- five older sisters. <laughs> yeah I counted right I'm not missing anyone and even that's what I was like saying to you the other day I was like you feel like my little sister and like I know you were you saying how proud advice. I am of like you know everything and you know doing the podcast meeting Bennett and yeah no it's a really I, I love it it's my favorite thing so it's definitely helped with my loneliness and you know missing friends that are far away that I can't see so yeah I think um we, we've talked a ton on the show about um, the internet and social media, but I think if we're, if we're going to bring an anxiety here, I mean, it, it really is incredible. I think as, as cruel and as scary as the internet makes the world seem, it's things like this, like the fandom, and Lorraine, you explained it so well. Um, if you're familiar with Maddie and Elijah or you're not, basically if you, if you enjoy any YouTuber or singer or performer of any kind, I mean, being part of that fandom, literally, you're all you're – all, united because you are fans of these people and then it becomes so much bigger than that because you realize that the lives that you have outside of that you can relate to one another become friends like siblings it's really a beautiful thing um i just want to add something (laughs) really quick go for Um, it so and no it's i literally consider them like my family like i what was it not not this christmas but last 2020 december i sent out my family Christmas cards I literally asked everyone I still have it you still have it and Mika has it hanging up in his room and I think Kaylee does too but I literally sent out like my family does Christmas cards like every year every year my mom's like take a picture and anyway (laughs) and so we sent it to like all of our family like we you know family sends it to us we send it out to them and so I was just like why not send you know my second family practically oh. the Christmas cards so I asked them all for their addresses and I'm sending like a, one to New Zealand I'm sending one to like Greece Mexico I'm like I'm all over my face is all over the world now so <laughs> I just I loved it because it really felt like family and I was like why not send them one because technically they are you know wow you know I'm curious I think you know we, we've talked about uh m e we've talked about school and and jackie you mentioned when you were at university and reaching that lowest point in your life depending on how much you'd be willing to share or feel comfortable you know what what does that feel like um when you when you kind of feel like you're at rock bottom and you know i don't know necessarily what was going on but but what was it like for you during that time yeah so basically when i was in my first year of university um we had our own dorms, but it's not like over in America where you like share it with someone. Mm -hmm. So your rooms are just yours. Like you're the only one in that room. And a lot of the time I found myself like I would be too anxious to go to classes and I would just rather lie in my bed all day alone in my room. And it's a small, small, small room. And it's really hard just to like, like when you feel that loneliness, all you want to do is like, I don't know I can't say for other people but for me I felt like all I wanted to do was lay in bed and just avoid everything and that's something I did a lot and I found myself doing a lot and I often found it hard just even to go downstairs to the dining hall and get food sometimes and so a lot of the time I'd have to try and push myself to just walk outside or like I ended up because I hated walking because I have a really bad asthma 
um, we had to walk up this hill to get to our university campus because all the um, dorms and stuff are like all around the city. Um, so we had to walk up this hill and I found like, because I had asthma, then I was getting anxious about like people seeing oh. me just puffing and panting. And like, mm-hmm. so then to sort of combat that, I started busing to university, even though my friends would be like, it's only like a five minute walk. But for me, that five minute walk would be a 15 minute walk because mm-hmm. I would struggle to breathe on that walk. And that's not even my anxiety. But then I had anxiety around like mm-hmm. other people seeing me like that. And because I lived with so many people, there were people coming and going from that campus all the time. So people would have seen me. I, I've never, honestly, I don't think I've ever related more in my life to someone, you know, feeling that sense of being in school and not wanting to leave your room. Um, I, I, you know, it just, it's, it's kind of, you do feel alone because you're there with so many people. When you're there with so many people, it's easy to just feel so small. And then when you're dealing with anxiety, it's like you feel even smaller. And, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, I sought some help uh, before I left because of COVID. And I'm, I don't know if you ever talked to anybody on campus, but, you know, colleges, they offer support and they offer therapy and all those things. But it's still, I don't know, I, I think maybe someone who might not struggle with anxiety, you know, maybe doesn't always know what it's like when, you know, you know, there's options, you know, there's help, but it's so... It's like you said, Jackie, it can feel so difficult just to get up and leave your room because yeah. it, that and that in itself is almost an accomplishment. You can say, I went to the dining hall or I went just to get a breath of fresh air. But, you know, it, it's a lot for some of us. Yeah. And it's almost like sort of you're fighting your own mind, if that makes sense. Like your mind's telling you, oh, no, if you go out and do blah, 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 people are going to think you're weird or like Mm -hmm. they're going to look at you funny. And so then you've got like that part of your mind telling you that. But then also in the back of your mind, say I was just going down for dinner, I'd be like, oh, well, I'm actually really hungry. I should go down. But then it's also like your mind's got so many different conflicts going on, like that it just gets like all confused and gets all mixed up. And so it sort of does, does feel like a battle if that's like the best way for me to put it. Oh my God, I totally feel that. I, I literally, it's like you can, your mind is, it is a battle because dining hall, go get food, right? But then you're thinking there's gonna be people there. They're gonna see me, they're gonna react to me. And I would always like, I would wanna talk to people in line for food and then get so scared to do it. Cause I was like, I just, I cared so much what people thought. And you know, we all go through that, but um, you know, it was just like, and I, and I would sit alone and I would see people eating together and, and food and eating is such a, it symbolizes so much about like togetherness. When you have friends or you have family, you share meals when you're by yourself, it's kind of, it feels really depressing and lonely when you're there eating by yourself and you see all these people that are laughing and having fun. And you're like, I came all the way out here and I'm just like on my own, you know? Yeah. I think it, it's kind of eye opening because after high school, you know, if you, choose that college route or university like you're like thrown into that not having like a prior similar like situation like when you're in high school like you you live at home you come home to your parents you have family it's a sense of like comfort but then you're thrown into this whole new environment with so many different people your family's not around if you're living in a dorm it's it's I could see how it's hard for a lot of people with many different social anxiety situations or, you know, people who are just different in communication and their comfort levels with meeting new people. So it's kind of interesting. Everyone's just like thrown in and you have to like figure it out. And you're pretty much kind of alone because you don't have like your parents there. You don't have people you really know there unless your friends going to the same college as you. But that doesn't mean really happen. So you have to like find new people. And I know like for a lot of people, that's really hard. So I commend yeah. people for trying to like navigate that and it's hard. Even just like adulting in general, like it's a lot of like, for me personally, I find that I still have so much to figure out about, like even just paying bills and rent mm-hmm. and like just finding places to live and like paying mm-hmm. insurance, a lot of it, like, is stuff I wasn't taught in high school and it is yeah, the they whole don't teach like it. They no don't teach it. So, like, you have to expect your parents to and you know and they have lives too so it's it's hard to like really prepare your child to like just be thrown into independence because there's so much that you have to do 
yeah school just teaches you know math english science history they don't really go into like how do you how do you do all that financial stuff how do you go about buying a house how do you go about like living life like yeah you know what I mean like they don't have that yeah in most high schools I think and even finding a job like yeah. um before like because of last year um New Zealand went back into a lockdown and I my job was in tourism and I did events and because we were in lockdown we couldn't host any events and so I was scrambling to try find a job and that's one of the hardest things to do because like I need that job to be able to live yeah no the pandemic screwed everyone over oh 100% I mean I I I can't relate to that because I wasn't I'm not like an employee but you know trying to find jobs my god Yeah. yeah even before the pandemic like I've been working since I was 15 so Mm -hmm. even before then I found like job hunting was so hard because they expect you to have all this experience but oh my god there's this whole joke about like you know the thing is like um have experience and I'm like if I'm 15 what experience do you expect me to have like you have to start you have to work somewhere to get the experience so like why are you (laughs) telling it's like where do you get the experience for in the first place it's oh my god yeah it's a very hard topic because so many workplaces just have all these expectations but you can't expect that from people who are like fresh out of high school or like even fresh out of university like they expect you to have a qualification and experience but how can you have that when you've just been like the past two, three years studying? And like, can we talk about like the stress and anxiety around like interviewing for those jobs? Like you're putting yourself like out there. Why am I good for this job? And it's hard when you look at the call or you're like, you don't get it. Like it's, it's yeah. hard to put yourself out there all the time. And especially like how you mentioned, like if they call you and say um, you didn't get the job, some places, because I've applied for lots of jobs, some places won't even email or call you. So you're just waiting around for nothing because they yeah. just they just don't even bother. They don't care. Kind of to give you a little bit of a rundown. So I, as I mentioned, I, I went to college um, and then uh, when, when COVID hit, you know, classes went virtual and I hated it. I just, I thought, this is not the same. It's like, I already didn't really like going to college, but then I didn't, I I hated having to do these classes virtually even more. Um, And so my motivation just went down a million. But I think that I speak for a lot of people when I say that virtual school can do that. But when you're already not liking college and it's not for you, that just adds. And I was, I dropped one class and then another, literally the point where I was just like, I became a part-time student. I I thought I'll catch up to this next semester if things get better. Um, And then my life kind of took a crazy turn when I was diagnosed with epilepsy. Um, I woke up in the hospital after having a seizure and that kind of forced me to slow slow down even more to the point of dropping another class at the point where I was now doing two classes. I was adjusting to this medication. I was like all of us adjusting to the COVID world and not knowing when we were going to get out of this freaking pandemic. And it was just an awful, awful time. And I was like, you know, just trying to hold on. Um, And so eventually I decided, you know what? The school is not working. Um, I'm not happy. I deserve a break. Mind you, there's plenty of students who like don't even go to college right away after high school. They take a gap year or they they take the time off. So I thought, you know what? This is my time to figure things out. I remember literally laying in the hospital bed and I actually felt hope because I was A, just thankful to be alive. And you literally get such a new perspective when you go through having anything that leaves you, you know injured or or seriously injured or in the hospital, anything like that, you get, you gain new perspective. You realize that um, there's a lot of pressure in the world to succeed, but you know, you just, you you become very thankful and grateful just to be here. So then I thought, I'm here. What can I do to make myself happy? Because I deserve that right now. I deserve to kind of have the opportunity to make the life that I want. So I'm like, you know what? This school is not working for me. So I dropped out. It was a lot to consider, but I I, I did it. I was like, this is not right for me. Um, I, my phone's buzzing. This is unprofessional. I'm silenting. If you're a podcaster, maybe this is relatable because if you forget to turn your phone off, it starts buzzing and you go, whoops. Anyhow, back in the zone here. Um, I, 
I, uh, I actually, I'm a screenwriter. I write scripts for TV shows. I haven't made it yet, but I, my, my big dream is to produce shows that I've created and written. So I thought I'll spend some time doing that. And then I also was like, you know what? I should do podcasting. So I created Mental Health on the Mic literally out of wanting an outlet to talk about my epilepsy diagnosis, but then realizing I could provide a platform for other people dealing with other things. So this show has been going strong for a little over a year now. And uh, point being, I've got all that going on, but I'm not supporting myself. I'm not in your position where I'm able to be independent. Um, the epilepsy was a big part of that. I couldn't drive for a while. I wanted to be at home to feel safer. And um, even as I recovered with that, I still was trying to figure my life out. What do I want to do for a living? Because um, I still have the Hollywood TV dream. I'm doing the podcast. Um, I've actually I, I've been having conversations with my parents as of this week about what can I do to finally get back on my feet. I'm actually I'm at community college right now taking a class in intro to psychology, and I'm thinking that this is something that I'm finding myself really passionate about: mental health, the brain all of that in general. So I'm thinking next semester, I'm going to take two classes and then three the next one and, and kind of work my way back up um, to becoming a full-time student again. I, I'm rambling all over the place. I'm just trying to give the cliff notes <laughs> No, you're here. doing great. You're doing great. Um, yeah, yeah. This is really fascinating. Oh, so thank keep you. going. <laughs> I'm trying to make sure I'm covering all the ground while also not, you know, doing too much for people's <laughs> brains to handle at once. But anyway, um, the other element, what was I going to say, is that I, I had like an... Uh, like the whole ego thing of like wanting to make it in Hollywood. I had a, I literally had a um, TV producer, no, no one like major, but who I met through college and was almost the silver lining who worked with me on a script that he was like, Bennett, this is really good. Like, I want to keep working with you. I want to get you an agent, which led me to believe I could be on a path to like that being my career. I'm like, I'm 20 years old, but could I make it as like a young TV writer? Um, and then he like ghosted me out of nowhere. And then I kept going. I'm like, okay, maybe find someone else. I started like, I, I found all these online, online, um, I don't know if you know IMDB where you can like find lists, see actors in, that are in movies. And I paid for like IMD pro and I was finding names of producers and I was able to email them and I got a couple of meetings and then I had a lot of rejection and I had people that said they would talk to me and then didn't. So I had a huge like realization of like the separation of my dream and like what's reality I don't really believe in backup plans. I, I, I like to call it plan B, and some people may think that's BS and that it is a backup plan. No disrespect if backup plans are people's thing, but like I I know what I want and I go after it. So anything I have to do to, do to get there, that's how I feel. If I'm going to school after thinking, ah, I don't need school, I'm going to drop out and become you know the next big Hollywood hotshot, whatever. If I'm going back to school instead, I like to tell myself, you haven't failed, you're just on the path to getting there. Um, and so by going to school, like right now I'm like, what if I become a therapist and like through therapy, learn a lot about the human condition and like through talking to my patients, getting all kinds of story ideas while continuing to pursue writing and continuing to network with people who are in Hollywood or wherever. And then one day make it after I've basically, you know, uh, hustled and hustled. And the, the main thing I'm trying to figure out right now is I want to become independent. I want to so be able to support myself. Honestly, because I mean, you understand that and, and you've been doing it for a couple of years now. I, I am afraid of like, you know, not just the failure, but I want to be able to support myself, make a living, support a family one day. Um, and so I, that's, that's my life right now. With that comes a lot of anxiety because there's something so freeing and cool and, and that I embrace. And yet it's also so scary when you kind of don't have your life together and I don't know whoever's listening may be in that position. I know most people are in school or they're working at a job. I don't have a stable job right now. I, I actually uh, write articles for an entertainment news website, which is kind of like a gig, as little as it pays. Um, I have got that, and I'm taking one class right now. That's what I have. And it's 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 better than nothing. But to me, I sometimes ask myself, am I doing enough? Um, that creates a lot of anxiety. I think it's a good thing. I think I'm taking the small steps of like, Maybe I'll take two classes next semester. And heck, um, today I was like, maybe I'll drive for DoorDash. I don't know if they have that in New Zealand, if you're familiar with. Uh... Uh, we've got something similar. We call it like Delivery Easy or like Uber Eats. Yeah. yeah. Same, same ballpark. Um, anyway, so that's kind of like like where I'm at right now. But it causes a lot of anxiety because, I mean, I've had a health scare. We've all had to deal with COVID. And I'm trying to figure out what the heck I'm going to do with my life. So 
you know, that's kind of where I'm at as far as letting anxiety take over a little bit. Yeah, and to sort of touch on some of the things you said, hopefully this is all good. Um, but like, yeah, even just trying to figure out your life and like what to do and where to go can like produce so much anxiety. And even like, even being independent, um, I find I have some really bad moments and Lorraine's probably been there for a few of them where I've like been freaking out and being like, oh, I don't know if I can do this anymore because mm -hmm. it is hard. Like sometimes it's hard to buy groceries and afford all of that stuff. And so, yeah, and even just with like your health scare, like you said, that even just that can bring on a lot of anxiety. And I don't know how you were feeling in that moment, but like definitely something like that, if it was me, would like really scare me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's scary. I deal with it. Um, it, it's, it, it comes and goes the, you know, it's like, I, I take my medicine, I have assurance that the medicine's working. I have doubts. I get scared sometimes. Um, and I can't help that, you know, and I don't, you know, it, it's normal. Anybody who has a health condition, uh, I know you mentioned asthma, I know it's different, but, um, you know, that stuff does scare me. Um, actually I, w I wanted to talk about this. I don't know if, if I'm the only one here, but like, I get more anxious at nighttime. I don't know if anybody else here relates to that or when they've been anxious yeah. before. Oh, the time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know. There's some, it's actually kind of, I, I try to, I actually think that with what I've been learning in, in class right now, I'm trying to almost kind of embrace like, and, and become more fascinated with like sleep anxiety because like, I think there is something about going to bed and not knowing what happens like when you sleep and stuff that can be kind of scary. Um, and then it's like, I made this point in my class the other day. I was like, sleep is supposed to be about about resting and yet our mind does so much work because we've learned about like REM sleep and not REM sleep. And like when you're in the, when you're just in kind of the, the brief point of falling asleep, but then you're in deep sleep and that's when you dream and that's, you know, and then you wake up and, and, um, I don't know, like something about going to bed and like not knowing what you're going to dream about. And if dreams can create anxiety, whether it's like nightmares or you're just like uh, the fact of like, you're not in control when you're asleep. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know if any of this is like making any sense right now, but. Uh... Well, even like on the sleep thing, I find like t I've just moved house today. I don't know if you can see all of that <laughs> behind me, <laughs> um, but even just like because I was moving house today, I was a bit anxious about that and obviously a bit stressed. And last night I had a horrible dream. And so that's also like connected because your brain subconsciously thinking about what you've got to do the next day. And so then that can produce like horrible moments in your sleep and disrupt your sleep. Like I found I was quite restless last night trying to sleep, and especially because I had a bad dream as well. So it was interesting that you brought that up because I just sort of experienced something like that. Oh, really? Lorraine, what are your thoughts on any of this? Um, I really don't get too many nightmares. I think when I was younger, it was actually worse. I don't really know why. Um, I find as I got older, I don't have terrifying dreams. But when I was younger, um, I would have, I would wake up in the middle of the night and like, you know, run to my parents' room and like, you know, like almost start crying. Mm. I, I, I don't know why I had that issue when I was younger, but um, as of like now, I, I don't really experience that. I experience more like deja vu mm. than anything. Like I, I like something happens and I'm like, why do I remember that in like a dream? It's kind of weird. I don't, it kind of freaks me out a bit because I'm like, am I predicting the future? Right. Am I seeing the future? I don't know. Or maybe it's just my mind like tricking me. I don't know. But, um, no, I, I don't really get nightmares often anymore. This is so random, but, um, you mentioned like the deja vu or predicting things. I am a huge fan as Lorraine knows of American Idol. I assume in New Zealand, they have New Zealand Idol or the singing competitions, um, yeah. on TV <laughs> <laughs> and one year on American Idol, uh, the judges, like one of the judges was Nicki Minaj and I had a dream that Nicki Minaj died 
And then the next night on Idol, I kid you not, they brought out the judges and she wasn't there. And then it literally turned out that she was just in a traffic jam, which is unusual because usually professionals show up to work on time if they're going to be on live television. But she was just in California traffic and then just showed up 10 minutes late. But I'm like, oh my God, I had a dream that Nicki Minaj died. So and you now, thought that she died? No, I don't know. I didn't oh think my that she, God. I mean, we, I would have heard about it in the news. So I, I was like, she's not dead. But like, it was just so wild. Like, How literally she wasn't the next there, night. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. But um, yeah, I think there's something about nighttime. And the crazy thing is like, with doctors that like tell you how important sleep is. And like, mm-hmm. and, and I'm learning now about like, they say that if you get regularly get 79 hours of sleep every night or close to every night you're likely to outlive somebody who doesn't so more sleep is supposed to help you stay healthy but when you're too worried to go to sleep it's like it's so hard like you're got one Mm. side of yourself saying go to sleep because you need it. it's going to make you feel better but then it's like i'm too afraid to go to sleep so it can be tricky to navigate that yeah that's the whole your mind battling itself thing again yeah Everybody has different outlets. Like I'm a runner, so I run and I try to like let go of of, of things. For what either of you guys, do you have an activity that kind of de-stresses whatever it might be that that like is bothering you on a daily basis? Um, I do lots of like photography and dancing, and just like if me and my um, girlfriend are both quite stressed, then we'll like go to a golf driving range and just hit a bunch of balls and that, that like helps so us so therapeutic. much oh, oh it my is God. it is like the best thing ever because I, I i think golf is boring sorry yeah. if you're a professional golfer listening to this podcast. <laughs> i mean i don't think we have that audience but if you love golf i'm sorry yeah I'm tiger just... woods sorry we offended you because you're listening <laughs> yeah. to this right now but go on <laughs> but that sounds like so much fun just to like aggressively hit a ball over and over again <laughs> that would make me feel better I think for me um um I think for me I I like you know maybe watch you know a favorite show whether that's like Grey's Anatomy if you guys didn't know I'm like a big fan of that show or coloring because that makes me feel like a kid again with no responsibilities or issues um that's kind of my or music I like music two things or just talking talking about it talking about it helps by the way thanks to Lorena I'm now obsessed with Grey's Anatomy I hadn't seen it but when she was the she started as the guest on episode <laughs> one of season two and we were like we should do another episode together and she said not unless you watch Grey's and I'm like okay oh, yeah, I gave him an ultimatum I was like Bennett <clears throat> I will not do an episode two if you don't attempt to watch the first episode of Grey's Anatomy and he did I was surprised. <laughs> he pulled through with the deal. And, and now, he actually liked it. Yeah. And now I am on season two and I'm obsessed. Um, anyway, also coloring. I love coloring too. And okay, can we talk about like, it's so important to like always be a kid, I feel like. And I know that, you know, yeah. I don't know how you feel about that, Jackie, but like Lorraine and I always talk about like, we are, we love to be goofy. We love to, I'm Kids obsessed with, do you know about, do you know about Peppa Pig? I are you talking about the Peppa Pig theme park because I saw you post? Oh, that. you saw that? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Have you ever like seen the the show? No. Yeah. I'm. It's I'm. So funny. I just turned 21 and I'm obsessed with Peppa Pig. I am proud to admit that I'm obsessed with Peppa Pig because it makes me feel young. Oh. And you know what? It's good for my mental health. Like. Yeah. It make it makes you laugh, makes you smile. Like those are great endorphins to have. And by the way, you guys didn't ask for this story, but I'm just going to tell it. Um, Bennett and I went to Target and he was like, we got to find the Peppa Pig section. We got to, we got, what's Peppa, just one Peppa toy. <laughs> Where's the toy? Like, I, I just want to see something Peppa in Target right now. We're walking around. I'm using like my phone app to like figure it out. And we come across this whole like end aisle, like shelving <laughs> of all this Peppa Pig stuff. And Bennett is ecstatic. He is smiling, screaming. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> he was so happy about it. Yeah, I love my Peppa. What can I say? Um, I don't know. I think it's just so important, you know, because I think that um, it is important. Like the older we get, I think like, I mean, it, it kind of plays into Jackie, I mean, with your all of the things that you're doing. I mean, just being independent, like the older you get, the more responsibilities you have. So sometimes it's nice to just escape and like, 
I low key watch Peppa and like I wish life was as simple as it is where every story resolves itself in four minutes and they get yeah. from one place to another in the flick of a switch. Like it's just, yeah. you know, and I think that it's important that everybody has an outlet, whether it's a show or it's listening to music. I mean, who here thinks that music is just like a great outlet to listen to your favorite artist? And is there like a song or an artist for either of you that just helps you when you're going through tough times? Oh, 100%. I'm always singing in my car and I'm a big Kanye fan. I'm pretty sure Lorraine knows that. Um, <laughs> I'm posting about him all the time, even though <laughs> he he has some issues, but I can admit that. But <laughs> um, he can be a bit problematic, but his music has always just like helped me and like it gives me something to be excited about. Yeah, I know he's he's been in the media a lot lately, um, but putting yeah. aside the... <laughs> <laughs> Putting aside the the Skeet Davidson and the, you know, trying to get back Kim Kardashian, whatever whatever it is, I'm, I'm probably only drawing more attention to it. So why am I even going there? But, um, <laughs> what what is it about like his music that just like helps you through it? Is it the lyrics? Is it the feeling you get with the melodies? What what does it for you? I think because. I'm originally a tap dancer, so I listen to a lot of beats. Mm -hmm. And I think just the way he produces his beats is just like insane. Like not like many other artists. And he produces a lot of artists' music because he was originally a producer. He's just released a Netflix documentary yes. sort of about like his producing days and how he got his big break as a rapper. And I think like I just like listening to how he like has sort of changed music. That's cool. I know that. I, yeah, I was actually going to mention it's called Genius, but spelled f in a funky way. It's a trilogy. Yeah. <laughs> There's three parts to it. Lorraine, any artists for you that relieve anxiety? Uh, I really am all over the place. I think it's not really a specific artist, but more just like genres. Mm -hmm. Like I... I tend to list if I'm like really stressed out I like slower more calming melodic beats so really it's not like an artist it's more just the style and the lyrics and I kind of try to match that to what I'm feeling and based on that that's kind of where I go with that hmm. interesting I live for EDM music I live for things that are just fast I'm he loves my, fast yeah my favorite era of music was like from 2011 to 2012 13 ish like David Guetta Calvin Harris all these DJs who normally would just be in the clubs were having their songs put on the radio and I love pop music in general so to have like fast music like that I just I even as somebody who deals with anxiety I always want life to be a party I always like love just like I I would always love being at parties or weddings or bar mitzvahs like wherever and just like or clubs and, and, and just feeling alive and feeling like life is a celebration. And so I love that music because it's just, it's upbeat and it's uplifting. And, and like, I've never been to a music festival. One day I would, I would love to go to one and, and, or like, I don't know. Oh much my about God. What about Coachella? Yeah. 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 Coachella. Uh, in California. I've oh my been God. to a music festival. Yeah. Okay. Was, and, um, <laughs> I lost all of my friends, but I had a really good time. And then I found them in the streets after the festival ended just by chance. But like, it was just cool because you had a range of different artists I and love that. there were different stages. So you could go to right. which artists you were the most interested in. Guys. So like, I, I think it's really interesting because music or YouTube or any content really like especially our generation, like it brings us together, which I think is really special. Um, you know, we've talked about a lot of really fun things on this episode, but I think unfortunately we, we, we can't ignore the reality that the world is a scary place. It's kind of a yeah. scary place right now. And I think that if you're, if you're listening to this, when this podcast is being released around the time, you know, if I say the word war, you know, what's going on. I don't have to explain it. Neither of us have to, um, none of us do, but uh, unfortunately, really, probably anytime you're listening to this, there's something going on in the world. Really, this applies mm -hmm. to not what's going on right now, but really just in general, uh, there always is something that we see on the news going on in different parts of the world. So with that being said, um, you know, it can cause a lot of anxiety. Um, so I think that without necessarily addressing the situation itself, it's like, what do we do when the news can scare us? How do we cope? I'm curious from either of you. 
do you take this stuff in? Do you try to distract yourself when you're hearing about it and there's all this noise? What do you do? I think for me, I find like it can be hard when people are talking about it all the time and especially um, in my workplace, like people are always talking about the current events and like their feelings about it. And Yeah, Lorraine, what do you think? Yeah, I think people cope with bad news or scary news in many different ways. Some people can freely and openly talk about it and, you know, it doesn't like psych themselves out or like they don't like realize who's in the room and how, you know, people process information differently than others. And some people, you know, don't want to think about it. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to see it on their phone. Social media now, like TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, like everyone's talking about the same thing and it's all over. Like it's hard to escape that. So like for me, I don't want to be looking at the news all the time. I don't have the news playing like for hours like I I like to get away I like to distract myself whether that be you know watching a show or you know being with friends being comforted that way um music like we talked about earlier so there's different outlets that kind of can get you away from that but also um I think there's like a, a balance between like understanding what's going on in the world but not you know thinking about it too much to the point where you're like making yourself sick you know and I think like it's important with our phones that we remember to put them down sometimes and mm-hmm. not like have like your face buried in it all yeah, the time take a break take yeah a break. it's so important to take a break from your phone because even if like say current events are stressing you out you can just put your phone down turn the computer off turn the tv off go outside get some fresh air mm-hmm. I think that we, those of us on this podcast right now, and, and depending on who's listening, a handful of us are very lucky that we are not currently in the position to have to know things, whether that's that we have a family and we have kids to explain things to, or we are a teacher or a journalist, or, you know, I, I don't know what it's like for people who for a living have to consume the news and how that mm. affects their mental health. And I'm sure that that'd be really interesting to get some perspective on. Um, But, you know, we're lucky that we have the privilege to not to just say we can put it down. Yeah, I just want to, like, also touch on, um, just so, like, we're being sensitive. Um, You know, with the current event that is happening in the world right now, we're, all three of us are blessed that we're not near that right now. And so Mm -hmm. we can, you know, get away while others are in the midst of it all and their backyards aren't safe. So, Mm -hmm. um, I just want to like put that out there. And if you are um, in that situation, um, we hope that you're safe and stay safe. You know, I I feel like as somebody who, you know, like, I mean, frankly, when it comes to current events, like I can think of two particular and this one really one that sticks that sticks out to me from when I was, I think, 16 of being in school and there was a certain world event going on where this teacher who I knew had the most pessimistic, um, you know, genuinely convinced that the world was like going to shit attitude about the situation. And she freaked me out. Like I was literally, I somehow made it to the counselor's office crying, you know, um, being, I want to say 16 and just hearing this woman, you know, at which I really don't think is appropriate, frankly, for in that school environment for teachers to be. It was like no. we were in the cafeteria, and I knew this teacher, and we were friendly. And I don't, she wasn't even teaching my class, but it was, I mean, it was upsetting and it scared me, and I, it mm-hmm. made me anxious for a period of time. Um, but I think, like, as someone who's been on a very long journey with anxiety, I think, like, you know, it's like you, it's hard when you're out of control of a situation where obviously out of control of something that's affecting so many people on such a, 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 um, a large scale. I think my goal as like a citizen is what can I do to help make the world a better place? Meaning right. be kind mm-hmm. to people, um, understand people, accept people, don't judge people. Because mm-hmm. I think the more love that you give, I, I truly believe that love is the single most powerful thing in the world. If we're talking about positive things that are powerful, because, you know, what does war come from? Hate. 
Um, right. It's sad, but it's true. And the more people that learn to love, it's like, I mean, we're, we're, we're just everyday citizens. And of course you have, whether it's leaders or people in charge who have the power to choose the alternative of love, which is hate. Um, you know, the reality is, is like, you know, as we grow up and we were this next generation, we don't know who's going to be running things when we're adults. And like right. the more love we give as teens and young adults, I feel like who, who knows, like among our, what if our peer becomes a super powerful person or what if, just someone that we knew from our school. Like you just, you never know. So in my mm-hmm. mind, the more love you give to the people around you, you try to spread that and try to make as much of a difference as you can. My dream and my prayer, I suppose, is that with every day that passes, while some might choose to believe that the world is getting more and more scary, I like to hope that the world can become more and more positive and loving mm-hmm. and that it's up to us and up to everybody who chooses to take the path of love to spread that so that we can hopefully, you know, little by little eliminate hate. Yeah, and just to sort of like touch on that sort of point, like I'm a strong believer in the law of attraction, which is basically whatever energy you put out into the world, you sort of give back. So if you're thinking, if you're trying to think positively, then obviously you're going to attract positivity to your life. And I think that could go for like, anyone really yeah Lorraine what are your thoughts yeah I mean it's I feel like it's just so much better to live in the mindset of you know looking at positive things and you know not just thinking you know oh the world is so scary the world is so bad like I hate it here like you really have to have I I I believe in living in a positive mindset looking at good things that come your way if they're how little how small how big like it's it it's so damaging to consume all this negativity and thinking about it constantly so I'm I'm a firm believer in you know give love get love that that I always yeah that's in my Instagram Instagram bio bio. (laughs) (laughs) um and it's been there for years um but I, I I agree with Jackie like I believe in that so much um and you know it's 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 sad when good thing no <laughs> when bad things happen to good people mm-hmm. but i yeah i do believe though that you know when they're given bad things that eventually they'll get good things and I yeah yeah. Think, yeah and then also to like draw from that like everyone sort of deals with bad things in their life and that's just what makes you stronger as a person exactly. it makes mm. you wiser like it just gives you more life experience and then what you learn from those situations you can apply to other situations in right. life or you can give that advice to someone else who may be going through something similar life is all about experience mm-hmm. yeah like you experience things and that will further help you in future situations so i agree and we're lucky that we have the chance as humans to experience things and to grow and to mm-hmm. learn from it because I think you can take anything negative and turn it into a lesson. And Lorraine, to touch on what you were saying, surround yourself with positive people. If you feel like, you know, maybe some of your anxiety is coming from the people you surround yourself with because they're negative uh, or they're toxic to you, whether it's, you know, us talking about world events or personal situations. If you just have friendships or relationships that are toxic, it's like, I mean, you know, that's your situation, that's your business, but yeah. Yeah. And then you realize when you, you know, finally make those decisions to cut someone out who's negative, you realize how it can really make you feel a lot less anxious. You realize that could be a a big source of anxiety. Yeah. It's really about, you know, I mean, anxiety is going to happen. It's going to come, it's going to go. But like, if you take control of your life and your situations and analyze, you know, what is making me feel this way? Like have like a self reflection moment and just sit down with yourself and think about, you know, people, things, places, like what is making you feel like that? And, you know, some things, unfortunately, you can't really completely get rid of, mm-hmm. but I think people is a good place to start. Not saying, you know, get, that's not really like a good term, get rid of them, but let them go, let them fly away. <laughs> if you want to <laughs> say it like that 
But like, even if those people around you, like, say, like, maybe it's family and or it's like your boss at work and you can't escape it, then maybe it's just as simple as having a conversation and saying, like, hey, look, I don't like the way you're doing blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Maybe we should see if we can find a solution. Yeah. And that's something I've had to learn and I've had like those conversations with people in the past and that can actually change things rather than mm-hmm. just like completely cutting someone out of your life. Right. Those conversations are hard, but if you can get a positive outcome out of that, you know, I, I'm that is true. I, I would also say, you know, don't just cut them dry. I think if you mm. see some type of potential with that person or in a situation where you're at work and you need to get along with your coworker or boss, like have those conversations, see what you can salvage, see what you can, you know, make mends, you know? Yeah. It's such an important point yeah. because I, I forgot myself and thank you for bringing it up, Jackie, that sometimes you can't escape it. So what do you do in the situations? I believe, like you said, Lorraine, you learn to live with it and you learn how to have conversations to the best of your ability. And if it still isn't working, I think that it's a different situation. Right. But, you know, and you know what to do with that because it's your business. But I think to start, I think there's, you never know how talking to somebody could change things. You just, you never mm-hmm. know. And sometimes like I've found people don't even realize what they're doing is affecting you negatively. So if you don't have that conversation, then how are they going to know to right. fix or like change anything or even just like apologize if they've done something that's like upset you or hurt you. Communication is yeah. everything. You just never know. It could change everything. Right. Um, you know, uh, it's funny. In my class, I, I had a, I, I learned something. And, and I don't know if this is silly because if someone knows this, they're like, oh, dude, this is so obvious. But maybe it's not. I always thought of meditation as like the kind of stereotypical um and you're saying something and like jay shetty i don't know y'all if you all know him but like you know like uh, all these people who are like it's so spiritual and worldly and there's so many different cultures where they're sitting and and then i learned that quite simply meditation is just the act of reflecting and doing something so like praying is a form of a form of meditation you know with the mindfulness movement any act exercise in mindfulness is a form of meditation so like that reflection that you were talking about lorraine like if you can find a way to reflect, whether it's daily or weekly or whenever you have the time, like to sit and think about things that are making you anxious, how can I improve this or mm-hmm. assure myself that things are going to be okay? Throughout this like anxiety conversation, it was really interesting in my, like to hear your perspective, Jackie, and then Bennett's perspective um, because you guys can relate to I think a lot of things because you guys are similar age, you know, similar time and life even though you're in two different paths you still kind of cross the same path with like college university yeah um, I just want to like put my little thing in but like for me yeah. I think I think anxiety for me like I'm I'm good with social I'm I'm very a social butterfly I, I have no problem with people I don't really have that struggle which um have served me well and sometimes and sometimes not because um I find that for me, it's hard to read social situations that are like not positive because I love, I like talking. And so when things get a little rocky, I don't, I don't like, I don't know. It's hard for me to figure things out when it gets, you know, uncomfortable because I don't get uncomfortable. So I tend to like keep being in that conversation and not get out. Um, But I think my anxiety comes from academics. Tests scare me. Tests make me anxious. Um, I'm not the best test taker. I'm not the worst test taker. But if it's really a high stake test, if it's a final, if it's a big exam, if it's an, it it really stresses me out. And I think people who are in college or in still in high school like me, you could definitely. I hope relate to that because it, it is scary. It's a lot of like, you're in a room with other people, it's quiet and you're doing this exam for, you know, how many hours and you have to perform your best in that time. There's no do over. It's just, you're doing it now and you pray to God that like you do well. And it's scary because that number like is like your reflection of who you are, how good you are, your abilities and I don't really like to, I don't really like that whole thing. I don't think you should like 
associate your self-worth and your ability by one number on a test but that's just my opinion um I wish there was better ways of like testing but unfortunately it's not what we have but I it's a lot of like grades and numbers like that stresses me out and gives me so much anxiety because you know you want to do well and when you don't do well and when things don't go the way you want them to it's hard so that's kind of like my root of anxiety and I don't know how it's going to be when I go to college I don't know if I'm gonna have a good time in the beginning if it's gonna be rough like I don't really know so I love having you know people in my life who are or have experienced that because I can kind of like (laughs) get advice or you know understand you know different ways people deal with getting into that like college environment some people thrive some people don't so I'm kind of curious to see how it's going to be for me Mm-hmm. But it's good to hear perspectives because, you know, if you feel a certain way, you're not alone because other people have felt those ways before. So I'm very grateful to, you know, know both of you and, you know, my friend Kaylee, she's in college. Um, so Mika. Yeah. Amiga, <laughs> like some uh, Rex. <laughs> yeah. Um, we're just naming everyone from the group, but like they're in college and or have been. So I get to kind of live vicariously through you guys and you know hope and see what it's gonna be like for me I don't know I'm a little scared it gives me a little anxiety and like you can always like lean on your peers and say like your friends like us for support whenever you need I know it's really great (laughs) I mean we've all been in your shoes before and like I know we've all been through high school too like remember we like know what high school's like and we know Mm -hmm. how stressful high school can be yeah. yeah, yeah, I I definitely know that with high school, even though I haven't completed college. But actually, since you brought up academic anxiety, now that I'm considering going back to school full time, I'm scared about that because school has always been extremely hard for me. The only class I ever felt smart in was English because as a writer, it's always been my strength. But every other class, I've honestly, a lot of times I walk into a classroom and feel kind of stupid. And I've had a lot of occasions where I kind of maybe take on the class clown role, and a little bit of that comes from having such a hard time learning that I'm like, I might as well contribute something and have people remember me some way. So I like try to make jokes and like, oftentimes it hasn't served me well. Um, I can think of like a, a certain class where I would just goof off and it was like, it was science. Cause I just always had such a hard time. Now here I am and I'm like taking intro to psychology and there's so much about science and we're learning about the brain and the, the nervous system and things that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm having to buckle down and just like figure out how to learn. I'm, I'm actually this weekend going to see somebody who's going to help me with reading comprehension. Like I have trouble reading small, tiny words that are so close together in a book. And like, I have trouble understanding stories, which is as a writer, I wonder, is that concerning? But like in reading classes, I always struggle. Um, So that'll happen for me. That's a part of my journey right now. But you know, some people say life is one big test because whether you're in school or you're out of school and you're just working, I mean, there's always challenges and like sometimes everyday things can just cause so much anxiety because like going out into the world, going out into the real world is tough. You know, it's, it's, you never know what's going to happen. You never know what conflicts are going to arise. I wish it was like television where in a period of time it all gets resolved, <laughs> I know. you know, um, but life isn't like that, unfortunately. So I think it's all about learning how to, to cope as my mom always says, is you have to learn how to cope, which is a lot easier said than done, but um, we're on this together. You know, yeah, yeah. This world. yeah. Well, um, I'll just make one more random point because it's on my list of things I wanted to say. But I watched this show called Atypical. I've, Lorraine knows about it. I don't know if you've heard of it. Jackie. I love that show so. You, much. Oh my god, really? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh boy. Oh, I love it. It's like my favorite Netflix show. No joke. I think we just experienced a new friendship live on. Yep. I yes. Feel well, free to talk to me about it because I love oh it and God. my girlfriend loves it too. Oh my gosh. I oh, a typical man. Like I'm kind of tempted, like I've mentioned it briefly in one other episode, but I'll just say like if you haven't seen it, go watch it because it's about a boy named Sam who has autism. He was diagnosed at four and he at the start of the show was going through high school, midway through the series, gets to college, but you know, the world is a lot different from him. But frankly, I find that what makes it so brilliant is really a lot of the things he struggles with. They're not that different from what everyday people who may be a neurotypical struggle with. I mean, 
I, I relate to it. Like, I'm like, I don't know about you, Jackie, but like a lot of his conflicts are things that all of us would be like, well, this is hard. Like, I know that he's has autism, but I deal with this too, you know? Yeah, like a lot of the topics in that show are like things we experience, but obviously as someone with autism, he would experience that like tenfold, like a bit more than us or would like struggle a bit more than us. Like, so it's quite interesting for me. So I watched it last year. I'm now watching it for a second time. I'm showing my mom the show. We're watching it together. And one thing that I picked up on, which I knew before, but I, I really tried as I've been actually probably dealing with more anxiety in my life this time around, uh, what I'm currently going through is Sam is fat, is obsessed with penguins. And so when he gets really nervous, he recites, and I would assume, I don't know if there's more than four, but he recites the like four types of penguins, Adelaide, Chinstrap, Emperor Gentoo, and he whispers it. So he like, he'll be like, if he's in a situation where he's in, it doesn't matter if he's in public or if he's just at home, but he'll just be like, Adelaide, Chinstrap, Emperor, Gentoo, Adelaide, and he'll repeat it because he's fascinated with penguins. And so, um, to have a, a very specific focus that's completely irrelevant from what's going on calms him. And literally a couple of weeks ago, I did that at, at when I went to bed because I was afraid to go to bed. And I was like, Adelaide. And I fell asleep and I was fine. Woke up, everything was okay in the morning. I literally used that. And there was also a really moving scene from an episode I just watched where Sister Casey, who really cares for him and is a year younger, but um, she... He was freaking out because he lost something. So she met him at his at his place of work and they hid in some place in an office. And um, she's like, do you want me to read you Ernest Shackleton's Wikipedia page? Because he's like an explorer. He's obsessed with explorers. So she's literally, it's so sweet because it, it's like, it's so unconventional. But she's sitting there and he's hiding at his office and she's reading very slowly and in a very nurturing tone all about this Ernest Shackleton. And you can see the look on Sam's face of serenity and calmness. And all of a sudden he feels better. It was a really moving mm -hmm. moment between brother and sister. Very human moment, I thought, but so unique. Anyway, I had to put that out there. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that I found a fellow atypical lover because I I think the show is just amazing. His, I think it should go down in history as just being such an important show, really. On that note... Is there anything else that we're, we're missing? Is there anything else either of you want to add or just ending notes? Take it away, whoever wants to start. Hmm. <laughs> Shotgun not. <laughs> uh. um, you know, I think anxiety is a very, it's a broad term because there's so many layers to it. And, you know, so many people experience it on different levels. There's, it's, it's very diverse. And I think it's, it's good to know, I think with this podcast, what we're doing, like you're not alone in how you yeah. feel. Um, and that it, there's so many different situations you're going to be in where, you know, you're, it's going to peak, you're going to have anxiety spikes. And I, I think just knowing that you're not alone in that and that, you know, there's resources, there's ways to cope with it. There's ways to, you know, help with that feeling is always good um and with everything going on in the world it is hard to f find you know the rainbow and find the clouds and find the sky um so I really hope that you know what we talked about um can give you some sort of peace of mind and whatever's going on out there just sometimes try to hone in you know talk to yourself be with yourself close things out and just really self-reflect um and i hope anyone listening or watching um i i i wish you you know peace of mind beautiful jackie what do you think yeah i agree with lorraine like mm -hmm. there's many different ways that you can cope with these feelings and you're definitely not alone like a lot of people experience these feelings, maybe not in the same way, but like very similar and have dealt with similar situations to you in the past. And I know like it's cheesy to say like, oh, um, I've been there before, but some people have. And like, obviously every situation is different, but you can definitely draw from other people's experiences and even yeah. your own experience and just remember like you can learn from it you're always learning you're always growing yeah you're not alone like literally we have Jackie 
from New Zealand. Yes. Like she is so far, like in distance, but she feels like Bennett and her are related on so many levels. Like I, I feel like the distance doesn't matter. Like you, you're from New Zealand and you still feel those ways. So like you're not <laughs> alone. Like no matter, like there people in your town are gonna feel the same way you like similar ways that you do. People in your state. Um, like are gonna feel the same way as you do. People in your same country, like, and then outside your country, like, globally, we are all having similar struggles. So put that in perspective. I think this is great that we have Jackie on because she's like perfect for this entire oh, episode. Yeah. <laughs> so I was so excited. And it's great that like we can connect from different parts of the world. I know. And relate on different topics. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of this episode for many reasons, but that's one of them is that we all, I mean, heck, all three of us, location or not location as a factor, we all are in very different stages of our life right now, but have been able to find these connections. And I think that that's what life is about is it's un- understanding that we all have our own story. We're all on our own path, but we all have the same feelings when we are on that path. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it really doesn't matter. And I think that, you know, things are pretty fast paced. And, and and part of dealing with anxiety is, is living in a world that is very fast paced. And whether it's like the stuff that's hard to escape in the news, or it's the things going on in your life and the con- consistent conflict that always seems to be happening. If anything, you know, I know that we kind of joked about how like, it'd be nice if, if it was like TV where conflicts always end. The reality is like, TV shows they have conflict because that's what drives it. Like, and, and conflict tends to drive everything. And while that's a little unfortunate, it is, I think, how you come back from it. And it's not, it may not get resolved in 30 minutes, but it'll get resolved eventually. And, and it's having right. your other characters, if you will, and your different worlds, finding the people that will help you and will guide you. Um, and, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we really are happy that we can be here for you if you're listening or watching and you may feel alone. And we're so proud to bring you episodes whenever we we can make a difference for you, you know? So Mm -hmm. to add to that, you know, if you know somebody who's struggling in addition to your own struggles, potentially share this podcast with them and tell them to listen or watch to mental, you know, check out mental health on the mic, because I really hope that we can make a difference for you or someone, you know, uh, you can follow us Instagram or TikTok at mental health on the mic, check out our website, mental health on the mic.com. If you are watching on YouTube, thank you so much. Be sure to subscribe. If you're listening on Apple podcasts, Spotify, iHeart or Google podcasts, wherever you may be finding us. Thank you so much for listening or watching. This has been mental health on the mic.